Hello everyone and welcome to the 2021 Baltimore Center Stage Young Playwrights Festival. My name is Annalisa Diaz and I'm the Director of Artistic Partnerships and Innovation here at BCS. It's been my pleasure to lead the Young Playwrights Festival program this year, now in its 36th year. A big thank you to everyone who helped make this event possible, from our extraordinary teaching artists to all of YPF supporters, to the entire BCS staff, including our learning and social accountability team, to our board of directors education committee, to this year's YPF readers who read all the plays that were sent to us through our YPF open call and selected these six amazing plays, to the YPF mentors who worked with our young playwrights to, to refine their visions, to the incredible team of professional artists who brought these plays to life, 
and most importantly, to all of our young playwrights who participated in YPF this year. Your work is so inspiring. Now, before I go any further, I wanna take a moment to offer a land acknowledgement. Baltimore Center Stage is located on the traditional lands of the Piscataway Nation by the waters of the Chesapeake Bay. These lands have also been cared for by the Lumbee, Lenape, Susquehannock, and many indigenous nations who are still here today. We pay respects to their elders, past, present, and future. And in the spirit of making erased histories visible, we also want to acknowledge that the many technologies that we are using to come together today are built of physical materials that come from physical lands, which have been and will continue to be stewarded by indigenous nations across the globe. Now the theme for this year's Young Playwrights Festival is Eyes on the Horizon. And I'm so excited for you all to witness what these young playwrights have to say about the futures that they see on the horizon. You're about to meet students from a wide variety of ages, schools, and backgrounds. And I couldn't be more thrilled with the range of aesthetics and styles that these young people are working in. We've got everything from fantasy to realism, from social critique to straight comedy. We've got superheroes, we've got talking animals, we've got inventive new worlds. I can't wait for you all to see. So with no further ado, on behalf of everyone at Baltimore Center Stage, we hope that you enjoy tonight's show. Hi, my name is Casey. I'm 17 and I'm a junior at Annapolis High School. Um, I was inspired to write this play because I'm a part of a bunch of subcultures and um, goth and preppy are just some of them. I'm a part of um, the Harajuku subculture, um, the Kawaii subculture, um, grunge, hippie, you name it. I'm probably seen it or dabbled in it at some point. Um, but suffice to say, I love to see when I see characters that I dress up like or that I can relate to or look like in plays that go beyond just skin color or um, sexual orientation. Also, how they act in how they dress. So um, I just really wanted to make a play where it was kind of a juxtaposition of a really goth person and a really preppy person and I'm so glad that I got the opportunity to do it and share it with you guys um so I'm really excited to keep working with you guys and I hope you guys have a splendid day good morning sweetheart <laughs> How'd you sleep last night? It was fine. I guess. Is all of this necessary? Of course it's necessary, Pumpkin. We're really excited that you got the job you wanted. What was it again? Don't call me Pumpkin. We talked about this. Just call me the dumb name you gave me. And it's a bookstore. Oh, how nice. Maybe you'll find a fun novel instead of those sad ones you're always reading. Whatever. Can we hurry up? I'm trying to get there early so I can make a good impression. Sure, honey. Uh, jo uh, let's go, Joy. Of course, sweetheart. <laughs> I'm fine this morning, except for that horrible sun shining through the windows. I keep forgetting to tell your father that he needs to buy darker blind. Hmm. 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 Darling, your palm is telling me that you're excited about something. What's happening today? It's going to be a really fun day today. I'm starting a new job and maybe I'll make a new friend or something. It should be really cool. What are you doing today, mom? Going to the shop? <laughs> yes, darling. And if your father would hurry up, we could make it to the store before the rush begins. 
you know how all the gods become around this time of year. No, mom, I don't know how the gods get around this time of year, but if it makes you happy, then it makes me happy. Oh, that is your problem. You are too happy. It blocks your views, makes you see the sad things as happy. It will hurt you eventually. Plus, no one should be happy about this horrible- Now, now, Dreadful, don't bully the girl because she's happy. Let's hurry so we can get her to her job. She'll probably need to be there early. All right, girls. I'm glad to see that I have two new employees working here for the summer. I'm sure this will not only benefit me, but it will enrich you with books and knowledge. Now, before we begin, let's start with what our favorite books are. I, uh, I'd probably say that my favorite book is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I love the story. It's adorable. <laughs> I love reading it. Well, if we're going for basic classics, I'd say It. I read it when I was like 10, changed my life. I'm gonna skip over that last part and keep going. I picked the both of you because you each had previous work experience with books. Nothing's really different here. All you have to do is restock books and ring people up. But if you have any questions, just let me know. We've got our first shipment over here and you can put them where the label says. Well, this should be fun. What did you say your name was again? Rain. For a girl with such a depressing name, you sure seem really happy. But who am I to talk? I'm Sunny. Ignore the name. <laughs> oh, you're funny, Sunny. <laughs> it's almost like we should switch names. <laughs> Thanks, but we should get back to work. I don't know how this guy operates, and I'm not trying to get on his bad side. So, what do you like to do, you know, besides be happy all the time? Well, I like to meditate. Uh, I don't usually get out a lot because my parents hate the sun. So it's usually just going to school and coming back because I can't drive yet. I don't even know you that well and I already love your parents. But my parents would probably love you. All they I like to do is be outside, gardening, going to the beach. It's just not my cup of tea. Not to be rude, but your parents don't seem to be all that bad. Why don't you like them? Have you heard my name? They really want me to be like them. Like, maybe a bit too much. They think that I'm supposed to be this happy, go lucky girl, like pink, and see everything is puppies and rainbows. I'm just not interested. I can definitely understand that. I mean, I love my parents, but they're crazy depressing. They have this store that pretty much looks like a black unicorn threw up in there. They love to make the house all dark and gloomy. Gosh, when I was a baby, they didn't even dress me up in normal baby colors. I only wore black. That doesn't sound half bad. I wish my parents would have dressed me in anything other than that horrid pink. You're really making them sound like horrible people. Unless they're shoving pink candy sparkles down your throat, I don't see what's wrong with them. I would love to live with them. And I bet you'd love to live with my parents. Say, that gives me an idea. What if you came and spent the night at my house and I came to spend the night at yours? We could make it like a bed or something. You'll totally get tired of all of their happiness and sunshine within like the first minute. <laughs> we can do it just for fun, no bed. I can't believe we're doing this. We've 
barely even met. Does it really matter? Besides, my parents won't care. I mean, they'll see all this happiness that you have and think you're an amazing influence. I guess you're right. <laughs> Let's hurry up so we can take an early break. Mom, Dad, I'm home. <gasps> oh, it's wonderful to see you, honey. <gasps> oh, who's your friend? Hello, Mrs. Joy and, and Mr. Charlie. My name is Rain. I work at the store with Sunny. Don't be alarmed. I told her your names already. She insisted so she could be all formal or whatever. Oh, how polite. <laughs> but you can just call me Charlie. <laughs> well, this is getting stupid. Come on, Rain. I can show you my lair. <laughs> Hmm. That girl seems nice, doesn't she, sweetheart? She's your. Is quite nice. So here's my room. There's nothing to it. It's just my only sacred place in this hellhole. It's not that bad, Sunny. And I knew it. Your parents seem so sweet. So what do you want to do now? You said your parents run a golf store? Yeah, why? So they would know about weird stuff. Um, yeah. Do you think they know about this? I, I found it in the back before we left. The parental eclipse? What the? All parents filled with evil shall show their true selves. The children will be their meal. Only the good will live to tell. And look, it's happening this year. It only happens every 400 years. This all sounds like a stupid fairy tale. You can't honestly think that this is real, right? So we're pretty much doing the same thing we were doing yesterday? Unfortunately, yes. It always gets this way around the beginning of summer. We'll have to wait till it's closer to July if we want to see more customers. <sighs> I know that it sucks, honey, but at least we have time to discuss what we're going to do later. I have a lot of fun games in my room. We can and paint each other's nails, if you want. Paint each other's nails? No thanks. Uh, if you have black, maybe I'll consider it. I know that it's lame. I've just never had any friends come over for a sleepover before. I'm sorry. That was really jerkish of me. Since I forced you to read the book yesterday and watch all the saws, we can do whatever you want tonight, okay? But seriously, it's hard for me to believe that you've never had a sleepover. You're like the definition of what it means to be an all happy American girl. My parents freaked everyone out. Either kids were too scared to come over or their parents thought that my parents would possess them or something. That definitely would have made me want to come over. <laughs> I swear, I'm starting to like them more each day and I haven't even met them. <laughs> have you found it yet? We have to find it before rain returns. <sighs> You'll never, we'll never know if, um, if Rainbow. You do know I have been holding it this whole time. Oh, please, Dracul. This is no time for games. This is important. 
Don't you care about everything that's going to happen tonight? Don't you care about rain? Of course I care. But we'll be safe here, away from all the chaos that's going on outside. Once we turn this potion, none of that lunacy can affect us. Are you ready to drink it? Hi, Mom and Dad! I brought a friend to spend the night! <laughs> Her name is Sunny. It's nice to meet you, Sunny. I like your choker. It reminds me of something I would have worn in the 80s. <laughs> I'm really glad that you came to sleep over tonight. Hi, my name is Heaven. I was inspired to write this play because it proves that anyone can dance no matter how old they are, what their gender is. Um, and I love dancing, um, so yeah. Hi, my name is Maeve. I think that everyone should do what they like, no matter um, who they are or what they do. I just think that you should do what you want. Hi, my name is Peyton Robinson. I'm 10 years old. I'm in fourth grade at Hampstead Hill Academy. I was inspired to write a play because I love acting and dancing. Hi, my name is Pedro Zuniga, and I am... 10 years old, and I am a fourth grader at Hampstead Hill Academy. And what inspired me to make this play was that I am from Mexico. Hi, my name is Zoe. Um, I love acting, and it's fun. Um, the drama class, Miss Durkin, makes uh, acting really fun as well. My name is Eric, and I am nine, and I am a fourth grader in Hampton Hill Academy, and I was inspired to make this play so people would not bully other people. Hi, my name is Ashley Canna Martinez. People are getting judged in this world, and we could change that if we spread out a message to those people who are judging these boys who love doing ballet and doing all those stuff that people think girls do. And we shouldn't only be just standing up for those boys, for those people who love doing soccer, basketball, ballet, guitar, and playing all those instruments. People would still be getting judged for what they wear, for what they like, and all those stuff. If we just keep spreading out this message, we would still, we would have a, a bit amount of people who are still judging people, but a, a big amount of people who support, are supporting those people. <laughs> hey. Am I supposed to put these on my ears? Like, I mean, who wears these kinds of earrings? Okay, yeah. oh. okay, oh. bailarines, settle down and warm up. <clears throat> Did you see that girl Billy at school yesterday? <laughs> Did you know that Billy aced the test? Uh, that nerd how dare she act like she didn't want to be in our group yeah her outfit was trash we should totally cheat off of her next time Marinas, focus i don't see you warming up we have a new student today so you need to set a good example who is he what is he doing here is that your son? No. Your nephew? No. Are you, are, are you lost? No, I'm Joseph. I'm the new student. Where are you from? 
me and my family moved here from California. Sophia, why would you ask him that? Excuse me. I think you're in the wrong classroom. <laughs> yeah, you're a boy. <laughs> Am I in the right classroom? Yes, you are. Welcome, Joseph. Girls, you know very well boys can dance too. Whoa, she's serious. Well, I've never seen a boy here. How long is he going to stay here? I hope for just one day. Just because you all haven't seen a boy here doesn't mean that boys can't dance. Joseph will be with us for the rest of the semester. <laughs> That's enough. We are starting class. Let's get dancing. We are going to learn the Mexican hat dance. Jaraba te patio. Señoritas, your faldas. I'm excited to nail this. <laughs> I'm going to be the best one here, just like last week with jazz dance. <clears throat> We are going to be way better than him. Yeah, girls. Ugh, we have to dance with a boy. Boys can't even dance. I love the Mexican hat dance. Okay, bailarines. This is how you do the first part of the Mexican hat dance. Right heel, left heel, right heel, clap, clap, clap. <laughs> Ow! OMG, he fell. What a loser! Stop that, girls! <laughs> you know better. We do not laugh when someone falls. But it's hilarious. OMG, I can't believe he fell on like the simplest step. She tricked me. Uh, seriously, what did I do to you? Why would you accuse me? Don't blame me for your clumsiness. I did not see what happened, but I certainly expect my dancers to take care of each other. Are you all right, Joseph? Yes. Okay, let's do it over so we can get it right. You should just quit. Boys can't dance. I think I'm good at dancing. So please stop trying to bring me down. What was that, Joseph? Nothing. Good. And five, six, seven, eight. Good. Next. You stand with your right foot planted and bring your right arm up. Keep your left hand on your hip and use your left foot to take four small steps. No, no, Savannah, you need to plant your right foot. Sophia, place your left hand on your hip. Sasha, that's all wrong. Again, right arm up like this and four small steps. Ugh. Joseph, that's perfect. Absolutely right. What? Oh, good. Thank you. Unfortunately, we are out of time. I have to get to my next class in Studio C. Keep practicing at home and we will pick this up tomorrow. Buenas tardes. Adios, Adios senora. senora. Um, Joseph? Yes? Um, look, obviously you're a good dancer. Could you show me that last step again? You want my help? Well, I, 
Yes. Okay. It's like this. Like this? Yeah. Wait, um, Joseph, I'm sorry I was mean to you. Could you help me too? <laughs> what? Like, obviously he's good. Not even you tripping him can bring this boy down. I didn't. Yeah, right. Just apologize so we can get this right. I... <sighs> I'm sorry I tripped you. I guess boys can dance. Anyone can dance. It just takes practice. Come on. Hi, my name is Makai Thomas, but everyone calls me Professor. I am 13 years and 11 and a half months old. And I was born neurodivergent. This means I was on the autism spectrum. And I'm in the eighth grade, but I plan to study and focus so that I can graduate and take college courses. I attend the Vine Ancestral Learning Academy Homeschool in collaboration with different kind of smart hybrid learning pod with Free Up Village. I was inspired to make this play because of a character that I drew. I called him in, made him a little headband because I like headbands. He's a Naruto. And, um, I decided to draw him in a comic book because I wanted to see him in action and I thought that would be cool too. And, um, then my mom notified me about this event coming up called the Young Playwrights Festival. And um, I decided that why don't I interpret that character that I created into the play? So I did that. I made him into the new main character, changed his design a little bit, and his personality. And it's designed to make him look like me a bit. His name is Lumi. He's the main character. He has two superpowers, which is super strength and laser beams. Varying sizes and shapes. And, um, I mean, nothing at all. But when I came up with the name, I need, I decided to take inspiration from the name and creating the villain. I also got some inspiration from my brother with the villain name. The villain is, well, the main villain is Blackout. He's supposed to be the most powerful villain or person in the universe that I created. And um, he's very, very, very mysterious. I also created Lumi's friends. And the villain has to have a friend too. Well, not really a friend, he's more of a subordinate. And he's a scientist. He helps him with all the experiments and stuff that he needs to do with his secret plans that Lumi and his friends are trying to figure out. And um, you'll see what else happens when the play comes out. So that's it. That's, that's how I made the play. Don't forget, this month is Autism Awareness Month. Um, yeah, that's it. Goodbye. This is the story of a superhero in Arrow City. His name is Lumi, short for illumination. In this world, 79% of the world's population have a superpower flowing in them called an ability. Lumi, the main character, has two abilities. His abilities are that he can fire laser beams at varying sizes, and he has super strength. He might not be top ranked, but he believes that his intellect will be enough to stop him. Lumi 
and his two partners, Static and Galak, are looking for the most powerful villain in the world, Blackout. His abilities are mostly unknown, but it is said that he has dozens of abilities. The only thing they know about his abilities are that they are telekinesis, heat vision, and super strength. Lumi is the only one who knows of Blackout's fourth ability, chronokinesis, time stop. Blackout is also known to be the leader of the evil organization known as the Syndicate. They are creating a serum called the Syndicate Serum. But little do Lumi and his friends know, the serum does not work in the way that name suggests. Lumi must find Blackout before he can use it on the city. This is the story of my hero, I mean, how to find a villain. For now, Lumi is meeting up with his partners, Static and Galak. As you join the other heroes in watching a news report, the TV screen changes from blue to red and it starts beeping violently. The report that a warehouse has exploded on fire due to a defect in its electrical system. It is assumed that the Syndicate were involved in this accident. We have more on the explosion on fire at the warehouse. It is unknown what was in the warehouse. However, there are rumors of packages being delivered to the warehouse containing vials of a dangerous substance. Could this be the doing of just another villain? Or is Arrow City in grave danger? We are working to find out. In other news, uh, the crime rates in this area have risen so much over the last few months. Hey, Lumi, Black, you gotta stay energized. Why did you pour it in a mug? Uh, I honestly don't know. <laughs> uh, any place? Uh, what you watching there? There was an explosion at the warehouse on Star Avenue. I didn't see that on the newspaper. Why don't you watch the news for once? Because it's scripted. It's faster than reading a piece of paper. All right, stop. Let's brainstorm. What was in the warehouse? Anything they could steal. Probably just a bunch of clowns trying to have a dramatic exit. They always make mistakes the first time. There might be some evidence that will get them caught. The heroes might not have to do anything. Mm. No, that sounds a little dumb. Don't you think that would be a little risky for just a dramatic exit? Yeah, besides, that's hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of repairs. Don't they have any respect for hardworking builders? <clears throat> I mean, if they just sneaked away, then they wouldn't have to worry about going to jail. But perhaps, wait, maybe they weren't just random criminals. Maybe they were working for a certain villain. Blackout? No way. I believe so. I think they might have stolen one of those vials the news was talking about from that warehouse. Based on the information we have, it could be another ingredient to the Syndicate Serum. But how would they know of any specific ingredients in that specific building? Hey, guys, I, I just thought of something weird. The word syndicate, maybe there's a deeper meaning to that word. Hmm. I think you're right. Syndicate, it's a group of individuals or organizations combined to promote some common interest. It might not just be one organization. It, it could be several organizations working together. I think the same. Maybe that explosion wasn't just for show. It, it might have been to erase evidence of what was in there. 
I'm pretty sure that the syndicate organization has spies all over the city. That's how. I think we should track those punks, destroy their hideout, and then beat them down. Sorry. Get a little drunk grumpy when I'm not drinking my tea. I know. Just calm down, Galak. That would be kind of fun, but think about it. The syndicate's main headquarters is located under a huge building, like skyscraper size building. Yet it seemed like they were constantly relocating. It took me months to pin down their location. If we get compromised, they just relocate to another one of their lairs again, which brings me to my next point. They have many lookout teams and they would most likely know if we attacked. No, we need a better approach. I have an idea. What if we sent someone in slowly to investigate the place and then get out of there before they knew what was happening? Um, how would someone do that? I mean, I know it's a plan, but how would we even get someone inside? I can do it. Wait, you can get someone inside? How? We're not gonna send someone else. I'm going to get inside. Wait, why do you get to go in there? because I'm the one who's going to investigate. But you've just said we can't send someone else in there. Uh, that's a risk I'm willing to take. You didn't see this coming? Sheesh, you guys never change. Don't worry, I'll be fine. I can do this alone. Are you sure? Yeah, this is what I'm here to do. Wait, I can help you. I could use my powers and track you through the cameras. I'll be your scout. Thanks. I might need you for backup if I get caught. Don't forget, the syndicate needs to be stopped. Meanwhile, inside the syndicate organization's lab, the villain Blackout is scolding his personal scientist with the slow progress of the syndicate serum. And don't think that I'm not furious at you now for the countless times you have failed even having this super soldier gone insane because of it. My apologies, sir. I'm working on it. You're working on it. Well, you'd better start working a lot faster than that. I'm sorry, but you don't understand. The test subject, 13B, died last night during the first stages of the experiment. What? I know, sir. Sorry, sir. It was such a waste of his magnificent body. Why weren't I informed of this? I assumed you knew, sir. 13B was disposed of last night after he was drained of blood and broken down for parts. Blackout has become visibly livid, so much so that the lab is shaking. Do you still have his body? Ye yes, sir, I do. Good. You need to study it. Preserve 13B's body, don't let it rot. Study what you did wrong and fix it. Only then will I forgive you for your mishaps. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Also, I'm going to want a list of the ingredients used in the experiment. You may actually learn something in that feeble mind of yours. And with that, Blackout leaves the room to attend to other important matters. <sighs> that does it for today. I'll be back next week with more test subjects. Meanwhile, Lumi and Static are hiding outside the gate of the main building of Capsule Core, also known as the Hero Gadget Industry, getting ready. Lumi is putting on an employee disguise to get ready for infiltration. None of the employees know that the syndicate organization's lair is secretly under the building. All right, based on your knowledge of this building, I should get in the lair using this special key card in the elevator, right? Yep, that's what I said. All right, you stay out here in the spy van and track my moves. Stay on the lookout for people that get suspicious of me. If you see anything, tell me to fall back, okay? All right. There isn't much time, so stay focused. Later, Static. Lumi walks into the main building. 
Meanwhile, Static waits in the spy van and starts hacking the cameras, trying to trap Lumi. Once inside the building, Lumi makes his way to the main elevator, which leads to the lair of the syndicate organization. Static accidentally switches cameras and sees a woman with blue hair and a long white lab coat and a guy with spiky black hair in a blue full body spandex suit and says, huh. that's weird. And then goes back to tracking Lumi on the cameras. Just before a gadget exploded in the camera with the two weird people. Don't worry. They are still alive. Here goes nothing. Lumi presses the elevator down button. Lumi waits. Nothing happens. He tries again. And waits some more. And even more waiting occurs and some more, and some more. As Lumi is about to leave, the elevator doors open. Two syndicate members stand there. Ah. Oh. So you thought you could just waltz in here, huh? Uh, no, I'm good friends with the owner of this building. I just... Yeah, we know who your good friends are with. Don't think we don't appreciate the favor. What? Yeah, I'm... <clears throat> yes, I'm new here. I was just going to use the elevator. Do you think we're stupid? <laughs> yeah, no. Then go on ahead. Oh. I'll just go do that. You'd better. Lumi gets on the elevator and the doors close. Lumi uses the special key card to unlock the secret floor. Meanwhile, outside the building, Static is watching on Lumi's glasses cam. But suddenly... Wait, what the heck? What is this? What, 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 what happened? Oh, no! Come on! No, I lost him. How, how did this happen? Crap. Oh, this must be a security feature to keep information from leaking. Oh, Lumi is in trouble. He doesn't even know it. Uh, I, I can't help him now. Lumi, please. Oh, if he gets caught, it's over. Oh, man. Oh, I wish you good luck, Lumi. It seems that Lumi has finally infiltrated the syndicate organization lair. He is only moments away from uncovering the secrets, the villain and Blackout's heinous deeds. But his friend, Static, has lost all connection to him as soon as he went down the elevator. And Lumi has no idea. Meanwhile, Blackout's main henchman, the scientist, is edging closer to the per of the Syndicate Serum. Will Lumi and the gang uncover the secrets behind the Syndicate Serum and halt the project altogether? Will they finally put a stop to the menace that is Blackout? Or will Lumi fail to pass the security of the lair, get caught as an imposter, and give Blackout scientists enough time to perfect the Syndicate Serum? Find out in the next episode of Dragon Ball. I mean, how to find a villain. What a nice sound. That's the sound of you getting killed in the next episode of How to Find a Villain. Hey, no foreshadowing, especially when it's false. I will leave now. And so ends the tale of How to Find a Villain. Uh, hello, my name is Ryan Pratt. I'm 13 years old and I am in eighth grade and I go to St. Andrews United Methodist Day School. I was inspired to write this play because I love to write creative writing stories and I thought it'd be a tough new challenge to try and write a play.
Don't you think this gets tiring? I want to leave this place. I want to live as well. Yeah, good point. I'm gonna take a break. No, man. Work a little longer, man, so the boss doesn't get mad. Yeah, good point. Did you hear about David? Yeah, man. Did his clock run out or, or something? Yeah. Yesterday. Hey! Get back to work. Remember what happened to David? I hate Andrew. He's a real bastard. Shh, keep your voice down. Yeah, man, I, I hate him too, but there's nothing we can do. For 500 years, we've been up here to protect us from whatever is below us. That's all bullcrap. You're all just on a floating gear for no reason. I'm sure you're here for a good reason. Your time is up. Go home and be here at nine sharp, or I'll make you pay. <sighs> Finally, man. We need to go home. Wanna come over to my place, Josh? Sure. I've got nothing to do and nowhere to be. Before I go, I need to take a shower. I'm covered in oil. Straight to my house. I think I found something, but you can't tell anyone. Is this one of your stupid inventions again? If it is, I'm not coming because it's always a waste of time. This time, it's different. Whoa. What happened here? I think I found a way to get the clocks off. Another one of your stupid ideas. Dude, you gotta believe me this time. Just because all of my other inventions and ideas failed doesn't mean this one will. Do you know how if we stop working, our clocks will speed up? Um, yeah. The only way we can get our clocks off is if we speed them up and leave the clock. No way, dude. If we speed up our clocks, we'll only have 24 hours to live, and it's impossible to get off the clock. How do you know? Come on, dude. Everyone knows that. So you thought. What do you mean? No one can get off the clock. That's what I thought until about a year ago. My whole life living up here, I haven't heard anything about the history of the clock. So I did a little research. In the library, I couldn't find anything. So after a few days of looking everywhere, I resorted to the oldest guy in town. Teddy is the oldest person in town, and he doesn't know anything about the history of clocks. Not Teddy, Jim. Who is Jim? He's 110 years old, and he lives on the outskirts of town. After I interviewed him, the next day, he died. That's weird. I've never heard of him, so... What did he tell you? A whole lot I didn't know. The most important thing he told me was somebody got off the clock before. That dude is lying. Nobody has gotten off the clock before. There is a way. How? In the town hall, in the library, there is a secret code. You enter with the floor and a hatch opens up. Does it still work? I don't know. Jim gave me his journal where he collected everything he learned. He had been working on the code. Wow, that, that is amazing. We can actually get off the clock. What about our clocks? How do we get them off? In Jim's journal, he said something about a trail that we have to follow. Okay, let's go. We can't yet. Why? Jim said the only way the code will work is if we speed up our clocks. But if we speed them up, George, we will have 24 hours to live. It's the only way. These clocks are controlling our lives, Josh. I can't live in a prison anymore on this planet. I would rather die trying than live like this. But how do we speed them up? Once we leave the clock, they will speed up. This place was designed to keep us prisoners, to 
tomorrow I come here at five sharp and we will skip work and leave. I will be here. Rise of shine! <sighs> huh? It's me, Josh. Dude, I said five. I, I can't wait. I'm too excited to get off this piece of junk. All right, let me get ready. So, uh, how are we supposed to get off this place again? All I know is under the carpet in the library, we have to enter a code. A hatch opens up that leads out of the clock. So what's the code? I don't know. We have to figure it out. What? You don't know the code. If we don't finish before six, we'll get caught. Well, let's finish before six then. <sighs> All right, let's get started. <coughs> <coughs> Look at all this dust. Oh. I know. What is this? Shouldn't be too hard, right? Ah! Oh god, this suddenly got super serious. I guess this is what's under the clock. Well, I guess we're never getting off the clock. Don't give up. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Dude! What? That was awesome! <laughs> Let's go. Are you sure it's super dangerous down here? Wait, be careful, George. Woo! We're free! Oh my god. And our clocks haven't. Oh, there it is. We got 24 hours. Now let's go. Where, George? This was the biggest mistake of my life. Why did I do this? There is no way we're getting these damn clocks off. Why would I listen to you? You're crazy and I always knew it. Josh, calm down. Wait, Josh! Well, I guess we're stuck down here. Come on, Josh. Look how beautiful it is down here. Look, there is a tree. I've never seen a tree before. And look over there, there's a big hole with water. Whoa, what is all of this? I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not sure, it's amazing. Never seen anything like it. But we gotta get going. Josh, you've got to see this. What is it? Not a hundred percent. Should we go in? Sure. Why not? We've been walking for hours. This is about our only hope. Uh, George, wait. We can't. We only have one hour left to live. Oh, this is a, a, a random shack in the woods. Jim told me this is the place to go. This is where we get our clocks off. And how does he know? I don't know, Josh. I will take any chance to get this clock off. I heard before everyone was banished to the clock, people got to choose their own jobs and live with freedom. That's impossible. Their, their clocks would speed up. They didn't have clocks. 
The clocks just try to scare us so we get no freedom. Then what happens when your clock runs out? I'm not sure. I don't want to find out. Okay, now let's get in the shack. I thought you said there was somebody here. Yeah, same. That's what Jim said. <gasps> Hello? Who are you? Oh, I'm a monster. Calm down, Josh. It's just an old lady. Just an old lady, I see. My name is Margaret. Let me guess. Jim sent you here. How did you know? I used to live on the clock. I got out of there and found a way to take my clock off. I spent years developing that hatch in the library. If that got directed, my plan to save everyone from the clock would have been screwed. I found a way to take my clock off. It took years of hard work. That is why we're here. We need- We need to get these clocks off. We've only got 13 minutes left. Please help us. Oh God, we gotta go quick. Here, give me your clock. What are you doing? Trust me, I know what I'm doing. Oh, I'll miss you, George. <laughs> no way she got the clock off. No, silly. I didn't get the clock off. The clock in your chest means nothing. It just scares people to keep them working on the clock. You don't die when your clock runs out. Then what happens? Why were we sent to the clock in the first place? It isn't so dangerous down here. Oh, that's a whole other story. Hi. My name is Samantha. I was inspired to write this play because I feel like animals don't get as much credit as they deserve. Hi, my name is Jose Juarez. In second grade, I'm eight years old. Hi, my name is Colin Robinson. What I wanted to write about this story is because the kids were being very nice to the trees. Hi, my name is Alexis Cole. I was inspired to write this play because I like writing stories. Hi, I'm Azalea. I wanted to play once that wrote the lumberjacks. My name is David. I'm second grade. I helped make the play so adults will stop cutting down trees. Hey, my name is Felix Almazo. I was inspired to write this play so people stop cutting down trees. Hi, my name is Eric Almazo. I am seven years old. What inspires me to write this play is for people to stop cutting down trees. I'll go over there and take a picture of that beautiful lake. Now I want to go find those pink flowers I saw last week. Maybe some animals will be there too. Looked everywhere and cannot find those pink flowers I need for my experiment on seeing potions. Seeing potion can help you see through anything you want. You can see the beauty in everything. I need to help people see the beauty in nature. Oh, uh, hi. I'm looking for the pink flowers that used to grow around here. I'm looking for those flowers too. I'm Andy. 
Hi, I'm Raleigh. Let's find the flowers together. <laughs> Go chop more wood. Mm, okay. Okay. What are they doing? Oh no, they're cutting down trees. Why are they cutting down the trees? Let's go talk to them and see what they're doing. We should stop them. Why are you cutting down these trees? We have to cut them down to make a potion that makes people bigger so they can't fit anywhere and they scare other people and people will avoid them. <laughs> That's a bad idea. You're killing the trees and we need the trees to survive. Uh, we're not gonna stop because we need the trees for the potion. I know karate, so if you don't stop, I will use my karate moves. There's no need to fight. We can work this out together. Uh, we need this potion, so there's nothing to work out. <laughs> You've already cut down so many. Please stop cutting down the trees. We need them to breathe. Could you use blue sugar flowers to make the potion instead? They're very powerful. <laughs> no! <laughs> the potion uses trees. Go away! Oh, we're busy. You should let me take them down with my karate. That's not a good plan because you might get hurt. Hey, what was your idea? We need to get the animals help. Maybe that'll work. Yes, let's go with that plan. Do you speak animal, Riley? No, but let's try calling them with this horn. It can be used to speak to animals. Those lumberjacks are cutting down trees. Uh, I do not like that. I, I'm not gonna be able to eat. We called you here to get the lumberjacks to stop cutting down the trees. How will we do that? I have an idea. If you all can create a distraction. We can do that. What will you do? Andy and I will take all their axes while they eat lunch. Sounds like a plan. Let's go. <laughs> I cut down 99 trees. Well, I cut down 10. 10 is way less than 99, crazy sucker. Well, how many did you all cut down? <sighs> I cut down a lot of trees. Hey, we're mystical animals. Follow us and we'll give you some gold. Gold? Hmm, that's worth a fortune. Let's go! Here, come on, let's do this. Keep going. This is our camp. There's no gold here. Hey, who took all of our stuff? We took your stuff, and we aren't giving it back until you agree to stop cutting down trees. <laughs> you tricked us. Well, we'll just get more tools. These animals work together with humans to stop us. I think we'd better stop. Uh, okay. We'll stop! <laughs> Yay! Woo-hoo! Hello and welcome to Mr. Parker's ELA class at Baltimore Lab School. This class wrote the play V-Force and I'm going to introduce you to the playwrights at this time, starting with the baker. 
Hi, my name is Tim Anthony. I am 14 years old. I was inspired to write this play because each superhero represents each of our class. Wonderful. And next, I will introduce Game Master. Hi, my, hi, my name is Y. Gonder. I'm 14 years old. I was inspired to write this play because we all were together and came up with the idea as a team. Wonderful, Game Master. Thank you so much. And next, introducing Spider Carson. Hi, my name is Carson Class. I am 14 years old. I was inspired to write this play because it relates to COVID-19 and the pandemic. We wanted to make a funny and safe play for kids to help them get through this hard time. Thank you. Wonderful. And last but not least, Camisto. Hi, my name is Ryan. I'm 14 years old. I inspired to write this play because I love superheroes and I don't like COVID-19. So I write so we write this play so you can our superheroes can battle the virus. And without further ado, we hope you enjoy our play V Force. Thank you. People keep calling me while I'm trying to get vaccines out to everyone. Who is this? Oh, the Spider Carson, I noticed there's a virus raging across our country and your city is producing the vaccine to fight it. I have good sources of information from some friendly leaders in other countries that tell us this virus may be from another. We are analyzing as we speak. Hmm. <laughs> Strange and beautiful virus. Where are you from? I've run every match on my computer I can think of. Nothing is even close to this virus. I can't figure this out. Come on, Kimisto. Get your head in the game. We need to figure this out. Come on, everyone, cook faster. People are waiting and we have to feed them. We're working as fast as we can for you. Please, be patient. Oh, I hope this vaccine works and we can figure this out. This is out of control. Uh, it's impossible. Every hack I try fails. This virus is like fighting an enemy I can't see. Just when I think I have it figured out, bam, I lose another life. And that isn't a game. This virus is raging and I must find a solution. I swear, there is something fishy going on with this virus. Or Maybe it's my suit that smells fishy since I did eat fish last night after getting back from helping the Goo Corps distribute vaccines. Hmm. What's up, Spider Carson? Why are you calling? Force, I must get the team ready. President Biden needs our help. I need you at HQ right now. To the rescue, all rescate, B Force, roll to the rescue. I was in the middle of making cake. This better be good. Where is he? He'll be here. Don't worry. Attention, B Force. Camisto, Baker, and Game Master, I need you in the control room right now. He can be so dramatic sometimes. What's going on? The virus in Baltimore is spreading beyond control. The president thinks it could be related to an alien force. We need the military for this job. 
something bigger is going on. I just know it. We better be prepared. Okay, I'm aware. I know what the situation is. I think the Goo Corp and Mr. Dumpster have brought a virus to the city or something so that they can make a profit. Ah, uh, no. People will get even more sick from this virus. We have to stop it now. Let's go see this dumpster guy and figure out what is going on. Something is up with Goo Corp. There's a boss there we have yet to be. We need to be ready. It could be dangerous. You're right. The lab traced the virus back to an outbreak at Goo Corp. Something is fishy. That's what I said. We have a plan. We'll find out more about the virus by talking to Dumpster. I'll be here keeping watch on the entire situation in case you need me. Good luck and be brave. I'm going back to help the people. That seems to be the best idea for me right now. I love having the team together again. Welcome. I'm Mr. Sneeze. <clears throat> My boss will be with you in a moment. Please, wear a mask while you wait. We don't want you heroes to get sick. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, gentlemen of the Hero Claw. I am so pleased that you have come to see all the great, amazing work we're doing to save the people of our fine planet. As you know, Gucor is one of the best companies that save lives all the time. So, um, Mr. Dumpster, I have been running some numbers, and I am curious how your company is planning to save the planet from the virus when the virus has been living here comfortably the entire pandemic. Oh no, you big brain. Camisto, my friend, the virus hasn't been here the whole time. I don't know where it came from. Hmm, well, aren't you a silly dumpster? I think it's about time you might need to get a lightning shot to see if we can jog your memory and you can tell us what is going on here. How dare you insult me? If you don't leave right now, I will send my guards and have you thrown out of here, you silly heroes. Wait, Mr. Dumpster. Don't do anything to us. We're just trying to help. We're just young superheroes trying to figure out what is going on. How about you show us your lab and we will be on our way. Oh, well, our lab is right over here, Mr. Superheroes. Come right this way. Stay right there. And my guy, Mr. Sneeze, will show you the way. Ha 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 Booby trapped. See you later. You're not dealing with just any man. You're dealing with an invincible virus-making alien. <laughs> I knew something was fishy. You! You're the reason Earth is suffering from this virus! Spider Carson to the rescue! You may have thought you won this time, but we'll be back. I hope you germos have a good day, because soon I will be bringing a big gift for you. Bye-bye, Dumpster. We will be back. Everybody, let's go. Take off those ridiculous costumes. They're on to us. Time for phase two. The virus is spreading more each and every day. The president has announced that a stay-at-home order is a must. The V-Force is on the case, but the superheroes just can't seem to solve the mystery. That's it! We've got to get to work. We can't lose any more lives. Okay, I can think of something that will stop the virus. Now we know that Dumpster is an alien. I have an idea for a virus stopping machine. I'm going into the lab. Well, in the meantime, can we at least feed the people? 
so they won't be hungry and stay home. Well, while you feed the people and Camisto builds his machine, let's just say Earth is closed today and keep out any more aliens. All right, Mr. Press. Joe, I'll be right there. Before I have a meeting to go to, keep up the good work. I now have a plan to pull this all together. Yes, V-Force, even superheroes have to cope with this new Zoom reality. All right, so listen, team, I have a plan. My plan is to build a, a big closed sign that reaches out to outer space. So Camisto, I need you to build a sign instead of working on the machine. Oh, sorry, Spidey. Kind of in the middle of something. Isn't there somebody else to build your sign? Mm, hey, Game Master. Since you came up with this idea of a closed earth sign, do you think you can work on this idea since you are the best gamer of all time? True. Well, I am the best Game Master. Considering that is my name. <laughs> okay. I guess I will just build the sign. It was my idea anyway. Hmm. Okay. I do think all these ideas are great, but we need a time frame to give the people hope and a plan they can understand or until they become immune from the virus. Team, now that Camisho is building the virus community machine and Game Master is building the clothes sign. Now we need a plan on how to keep everyone safe until the machine is ready. The V-Force Earth is closed sign did not stop the virus bombs from being dropped onto countries all over the world, causing even more illness. We are beginning to ask ourselves if this will ever end. Stay home. Time for talk is over. Yeah, Game Master is right. We should stop fighting and work as a team. My game controller is charged and ready. Hey, Game Master, let's work together and go battle the aliens. My web power cannot be beat. I'll meet you at Goo Corp as soon as we get the machine in full power and cook it. Cooking? Now that is the kind of battle I can get into. I'll help you, Camisto. Let's go. the cleanup begins. Let me use my super shrink web to slingshot these alien spaceships out of here. I think we should have a big feast. I will make the largest cake the world has ever seen. V-Force, I'm going back to my mansion now. I'll be waiting on the next call. Finally, we have peace and everyone is able to feast. Uh, oh, oh no, is, is that something burning? I gotta go off into the sunset, finally. Like a game master always will do. The world is now a safe place again. 
The V-Force, though they went their separate ways, lives to fight another day. Well, I'm a phone call away. Did you know space has Wi-Fi? <laughs> Wow, congratulations again to all of this year's honored playwrights. And one final thank you to everyone who helped make the Young Playwrights Festival possible. We couldn't do it without each and every one of you. We hope you all enjoyed this evening's show and we look forward to seeing you again next year at the Baltimore Center Stage Young Playwrights Festival. Thank you and good night. <laughs>